Uh, hello guys, uh, please note that we are waiting for more participants to join this webinar. Till that time, I'm sharing our social media platform link, our communities link and our official website link. So guys, go and follow us on our social media platform for upcoming webinars and workshops.
Okay, let's start the webinar now. Uh, good morning and welcome you all in this a and session. Archie just said I'm a host for this webinar. Please note if you have any question and queries, put question on chat box. We will try to help you out. Then moving ahead and talking about event sponsor that is Synergetics. So Synergetics is in India one of kind co-porting running solution company. Now you will get a question like who we are and what we're doing. So answering your question, uh, we bruise through our offering and also we complimentary advisory service to client who wish to modernize their framework. Also we educate, advise, implement and manage. Then the Synergetic solution offering that is Persona based onboarding solution, onboarding add on solution, certification solution, certification add on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales pre sales training solution, practice playbook solution, and architecting solution. Then what this Microsoft certification does, it will give you complete learning experience. You will get build confidence to appear for the exam and get recognized. That is get certified. Here you can advance yourself. This is killing journey. Uh, first you have to complete fundamental certification. Then you can go with the advanced role based certification, then expert level certification. In this fundamental certification, we are providing you five types of certification that is Azure 900, AI 900, DP 900, PL 900 and SC 900. In this associate level certification, here you can see on my screen, we are uh, providing you AZ 104, AZ 204 and more. In this expert level certification, we are providing you four types of certification that is AZ305, SC100, PL600 and AZ400. Also, we have special certification that is AZ120, AZ140 and AZ220. If you want any certification, you can connect with us. Or I already share contact details on chat box. Then certification offering certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skills. Also, we provide certification add on onboarding add on like short duration modules and more. Then moving ahead, today training is organized and handled by ATC community. So our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in our cloud technology and various emerging technology. In this ATC community, we have emerging technology community for all. Then Azure Tech community for Pune Kars. Then Emerging Technology community for Surat Kars. Then Azure Tech community for Nagpur. Guys, you just have to install the Meetup app on your phone or your on a device. You, there you can follow our communities. Then you have to follow code of conduct, which will create a respectful environment for all the participants. Please note that participants are not allowed to take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. We'll try to upload this training on our official YouTube channel. And today's speaker for this training is Sonu Satyadas. He is Microsoft certification trainer and currently work with Synergetics as a practice head. Agenda for this webinar, you will get no more about AI 900 certification and benefit of it. This is eight hours of learning plan or uh, in one day webinar, we are providing you full day workshop and then coming with the self learning part. We are providing you learning achievement best just to have to follow the step and you will get the activated best. Then mentoring and exam prep session. If you if you have any question, you can uh, submit your question on our feedback form. Then knowledge assessment uh, by before the end of this session, uh, we are providing you assessment link. You just have to give your exam and test your knowledge. In this webinar, we are providing you AI 900 learning achievement badge. Here you can uh, see the step. You just have to follow the step and you will get the activated badge. Here you can see our upcoming webinar details. So interested participants can go and register the answer. Please note that registration is mandatory to all of us. Make sure guys you follow us on our LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube for the uh, relevant update and upcoming webinar and workshop.
Uh, thank you, participants. Uh, now I would like to hand over this mic. Our speaker, he will continue ahead. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I hope I am audible to all of you. Can everyone confirm whether I am able? I'm able to hear. OK. OK, thank you. Uh, so. Nice, let me. OK, I hope the screen is visible to all of you. So this session is. AI 900 that is the AI fundamental session. This session is the foundation course for the AI certification. Uh, when whenever you go for the AI 102 or AI 050 sessions, which is uh, advanced certification courses on AI, you need to cover this AI 900 as a fundamental course or fundamental uh, certification. So this course is more about the foundation aspects of uh, artificial intelligence on the Microsoft Cloud platform primarily. And myself, Sonu, I am the Assistant Manager Technology in Synergetics, and I am in this training industry from last uh, 14 plus years. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer on the Azure Cloud. Having uh, certifications on Azure Developer, Azure Administrator, Azure Solutions Architecting, and AI Engineer. This session, we primarily focus on what is the artificial intelligence and what are the different workloads we have on the Azure Cloud. And the fundamental aspects of machine learning on the Azure. Computer vision, AI services on the Azure. Natural language processing workloads on Azure Cloud. And also we will be ending up the session with the final module that is generative AI workloads on Azure Cloud, that is Azure Open AI. So we will be uh, taking this session. This is a one day session, so we will be covering the five modules. So this course is containing five modules. So these five modules uh, in one day, and in the morning session, we'll be covering the first three modules. And uh, in the afternoon, we'll be having the remaining two modules. And there is no practical associated with that, but uh, I'll be showing the demo, uh, which is uh, provided with the course. This is a lab link, which means uh, the demos labs are given. I'll be sharing this link with you later. So you can practice yourself. Uh, if you are interested, you can try the demos after the course. So there is a Microsoft Learn website in which you can see the complete learning path about the uh, AI 900 certification, and you will be getting the uh, certification badge after you complete this course. So during the session, they will be sharing the learning achievement badge, so you can redeem it and uh, go through the different modules of AI 900 in the Microsoft Learn website. So. As I have mentioned, there is a lab associated with that, but there is no hands on during the session which you have to do. I'll be showing the demos from this labs. The links for the labs I'll be sharing in the chat session so you can do it later.
So as I have mentioned, the learning achievement badges will be shared and you can redeem it and add it to your profile. So this is the foundation certification. Once you complete this certification, you can go ahead with the advanced certifications in the AI uh, path itself. That is AI 102 or AI 050 certifications. So in this certification exam, that is if you are going for the foundation certification exam, we have uh, five different modules and uh, you can see the percentage or weightage of each module in the exam. So the first module about AI workloads and considerations, 15 to 20 percentage. Then the machine learning on Azure, 20 to 25 percentage. Describe the features of computer vision. That is 15 to 20 percentage. Describe features of natural language processing is again 15 to 20 percentage. And describe the features of Gen AI workloads on the Azure is again 15 to 20 percentage. So that's it about the introduction of this course. Now let's start with the first module. The first module is AI fundamentals, that is AI overview. Here we will we'll be discussing about the fundamental AI concepts, fund, fund, fundamentals of uh, machine learning, and fundamentals of Azure AI services. Understand here we are not going into deep dive in any of this modules because this is a foundation course which is uh, giving you an understanding about what is AI and what is machine learning and what are the different AI services on the cloud. So starting with the fundamental AI concepts. What is artificial intelligence? So now I think I don't need to explain what is artificial intelligence because now even uh, kids are aware about what is artificial intelligence. So it's a software that mimics the capabilities of a human being. Like what are the capabilities of humans? They can think. They can visualize, right? They can imagine and they can produce new uh, content, right? So, the similar way, an application or a service can also process the data. It may be an image or text or audio, and it can either interpret that content or translate that content or analyze those contents. And based on this, they can also take decisions or they can generate something new out of this, right? So that means how a human being is thinking in the exact same way we, I mean, our applications can also think. So how it is possible because of artificial intelligence? That means predicting outcomes and recognizing patterns based on historic data. Means we are telling the application that we have a set of data which may be labeled or unlabeled. So we have a set of data. Based on this data, these can be the results. So we train the model or we teach the model about how to predict. By understanding that technique, the model can later predict the results based on the data what we are providing. Right. So like in our school times, what, what are the different formulas we are learning? Or mathematical tables what we are learning? 
we will be learning with the results like a 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 or 3 plus 3 equal to 6 kind of results we are learning in the childhood and later we will be applying the same logic for calculating larger numbers so 100 plus 100 or 1000 plus 1000 so we are applying the same logic even for larger numbers right so the training time we will be understanding how it is happening and later we will be providing some data and based on the data it can take decisions or provide uh, some results so if you talk about the common ai workloads we have machine learning computer vision natural language processing document intelligence knowledge mining and generative AI. So what is machine learning? This is a predictive model based on data and statistics, and this is the foundation of AI. So if you are working in an AI field, you have to know what is machine learning because machine learning is a technique of using a set of data and applying some mathematical calculations like statistical calculations on that particular data and then producing some results means we are making some predictions or taking decisions based on that data so we have a large data set and we apply some algorithm or we can say it's a kind of mathematical calculations we apply on the data and then it it is capable to produce results means it can, it is capable to take decisions or make predictions and this and this is what we call as a model so what is a model a machine learning model is a result of the <coughs> machine learning operation. So whenever we use a data set along with an algorithm and train that uh, model to understand what is uh, going to be the result if uh, a set of information comes. So the model can then used for various purposes. So some of them are used for uh, image analysis, some of them are used for text processing, some of them are used for audio or video processing. So for different purposes, we generate different uh, types of machine learning models. And this is the basic or fundamental concept of artificial intelligence. But when it comes to computer vision, computer vision is a subset or it's an area in artificial intelligence and it has the capabilities for interpreting the image like if you are providing an image or a photo computer vision is capable to identify what is there inside the image what are the different uh, objects in that image what is that image all about? Giving a description about the image or identifying the meta informations about this image, like which color it is. What are the different uh, objects we can see inside it? Generating some tags. Okay, so that means the computer vision is capable to analyze the images and produce some results based on that image later in a one of our uh, module we are going to discuss about computer vision natural language processing is the capabilities within the ai for computer to interpret 
written or spoken language and respond appropriately means if we are providing a text content. <clears throat> text content means we are providing some text data or some audio content, which means which is a text content. It is capable to read that text and can perform certain operations means it can analyze the sentiments in that particular uh, text. It is able to uh, extract the key entities in that uh, text or it is capable to. Uh, what to say uh, predict some uh, predict the next word. Right? So there are different uh, text related operations we can do with natural language processing. So that natural language processing is uh, capable to process the given text and it will be able to analyze the text means identifying or detecting the sentiment in the given text. The key uh, entities it can extract from the given text or translate from one language to another language that can be done using natural language processing. But document intelligence is another area in which we have to process digital documents and uh, extract information from that. For example, if you see most of the organizations older days they were using paper documents but now we are computerizing all the organizations all the services so what we have to do is whatever informations we have in the paper we have to extract those informations and then store into a database but the question how we will extract the information from the document. A document can be an application form or it may be a receipt or it may be an invoice or something like that. So from these documents we have to read the uh, text contents and convert that into uh, database data. So for that we can use document intelligence service. Knowledge mining is another area in the artificial intelligence. Suppose if we have a very large set of data available. It will be difficult for us to go and uh, search and find the relevant information. Because of the large volume of data for us, for a human, it will take maybe days or months to find that information. But with the help of knowledge mining, we can extract the information from larger data sets very easily with the help of the knowledge mining services. And generative AI is a subset of artificial intelligence or uh, we can say a subset of new deep learning which helps you to produce some new fresh contents based on the user request so user can ask the ai model that can you produce this information maybe uh, can you write a story for me or can you write a poem for me or uh, can you create some blogs for me or can you write an email for me? So that means the generative AI is capable to write the emails or write some blogs or an, any other information. So which means. Which means the generative AI is capable to generate new fresh contents for 
the user based on his request. But whenever we build AI applications, there can be lots of challenges. And we have to follow some guidelines for building responsible AI applications. Because recently you must have heard about there, is, there are some deep fake videos produced by AI. OK, so that means the AI can produce some deep fake uh, videos or other documents which people can use for some illegal activities. Right, so that means. The AI can be used for good or for bad things. Since it is. A system or a software. That can produce things or that can uh, think like a human. It will be able to produce things which can. Uh, be helpful for the human or sometimes it can affect them badly. So there are lots of challenges while building or uh, using this AI based application. So here are here you can see some points or some challenges. Which are categorized. By Microsoft. Okay, not only Microsoft, every uh, AI driven applications or AI driven organizations will have their own uh, responsible AI principles. But yes, you can see the Microsoft responsible AI principle. The first one is fairness. Means how you will ensure fairness in your AI applications. Which means when you build, when you make an AI based application, there can be bias. Which may affect the results, which means suppose if you are creating an application which is discriminating some people or there will be some discrimination based on certain parameters. For example, if you are trying to go for a loan, so based on the gender, or ethnicity, color, or sex. So based on these uh, informations, the, the loan can be approved or rejected. OK, so there may be a chance. It should not happen because based on the gender, age, color, ethnicity, or religion, it should be it should work for everyone means it should treat everyone as the same. There should not be any bias. So we have to make sure that there is no bias. Second is reliability and safety. So one very, very important question that comes in our mind is, suppose if I'm using AI for handling my information, for handling my data, how safe and reliable it is? Suppose if I want to uh, use AI services to handle our personal information, maybe we are having the pass, uh, passwords, PIN numbers, or uh, email addresses, mobile number. So how we can make sure that they are, uh, uh, what to say, safe, or how you are, how these applications are. Uh, safely handling our data. And. If we are building the AI based application, how reliable it is. Because if. If if an AI application. Can affect badly in. A, a user's life, for example, if there is an autonomous vehicle. And if there is some failure happens. It may crash and the, the passengers will get affected because of that. Right. Which means. 
we need to make sure that the system is reliable or we are handling or we are uploading all our documents of official documents or maybe personal documents in the cloud systems and why we are doing this because we we are ensuring or we are making sure that this is accessible from every place but unfortunately if you are not able to access this data for some time we cannot say it is a reliable solution right the same way when you build the ai solutions also we have to make the system is reliable and safe right so you must have uh, seen the movie robot in which when he when when the villain has inserted a red chip in the robot and the robot is start uh, hurting people maybe they are killing people and they are uh, uh, what doing bad things for the human so that means a robot is always a good it's a it's a part of the ai system only but a robot is always good and it can be used for good things but in case if something goes wrong if the instructions goes wrong it can backfire right so that means we have whenever we make the ai based applications or solutions or devices it has to be reliable privacy and security as i have mentioned when we store the personal informations in, in our ai based application or when we use our personal informations in the ai based application how safe this data is because we cannot predict how the system is going to use our personal informations inclusiveness is another thing suppose if you are building an ai based application but it is not treating every customers as same so some kind of users are not able to uh, use this applications or solutions then what is the use of building this application whenever we make an application for the customers and it should treat every customers or it should consider every customer like if you are creating a website in which you can use some ai based solutions for making purchases or uh, placing the orders or anything but if a visually impaired person cannot use that system then what is the benefit so you should provide an audio support for such people like if they cannot go and type inside the uh, system then you should provide some audio support for them right so that means we have to consider all the people and it should include every people in uh, that system transparency is another point so whenever you build the ai based application you have to make sure that it is transparent means how the system is working or how the system is taking the decisions it should be transparent to everyone for example now stock marketing in stock marketing there are you can see lots of applications that can help you to uh, buy stocks or sell stocks or means shares but they are they are providing some suggestions like okay you can buy this share but what or one on what basis they are advising you to buy this shares it is simply saying okay you go and buy or based on what condition it is telling you to buy that shares so this information should be transparent to the user 
accountability is the last point. In this, we talk about who is liable for the AI driven decisions. Suppose if you are taking or if you are building an AI application, which is typically used for predicting something. But unfortunately, if the prediction goes wrong, who is responsible? For example, if there is a thief whose photo is circulated all over the world or all over the country, so somewhere in a mall, whenever the user enter, there is a camera that takes the photo of each and every person who enter into the mall. And if it goes and compare this photo with the thieves or criminals photo, if it finds some matching, then we it will signal the police to arrest him. But what if there is a person who has similar facial expressions or facial parameters of that uh, what to say thief or criminal so that innocent person will get affected right because it was a wrong prediction there are some similarities in the face so that the system is saying that this is the thief or this is the criminal so the police will arrest him but Unfortunately, he may be innocent. Right. So that means if something goes wrong, who is responsible for that? So we have discussed what is artificial intelligence and then its workloads as well as the responsible. AI principles. Now let's understand what is machine learning. Machine learning is the process of creating predictive models by finding the relationships in the data. What this means? So you will have a large set of data which contains lots of parameters or we can say features and these features will be pointing to a particular label for example i can say a person is diabetic a person is diabetic only if his health conditions are uh, beyond a particular value for example his uh, uh, heartbeat value is this or held his uh, uh, in inside the blood his uh, uh, parameters like uh, white cells or red cells count is different or some other parameters or he has some a fever or heart problems or something like that so we will be taking lots of parameters based on this parameter we can say this person is diabetic or non-diabetic. So we use a large set of data to find the mapping like, uh, OK, these are the health conditions. So this person goes into this particular category. OK, he is diabetic or this person is non-diabetic. So we can use millions of users data to train the model and the model will be capable to identify whether a person is uh, diabetic or non-diabetic why because we are training the model with a similar set of data as you can see the first phase of this machine learning is to train this model with a large set of data in that data we have labels like x1 x2 x3 are labels which maps to 
a point or lab, uh, x1, x2, x3 are the features and uh, there is a label uh, y, which means if the features x1, x2, x3 are there, then he goes into the y category. Okay, so that means when you train the model, the model is understanding from the given data how the label is uh, retrieved or how the how we can get this particular label like in case of a model that tells a person is diabetic or non diabetic for a set of users or set of people's uh, data when it analyzes it will come to know a person who has certain health conditions is marked as diabetic a person with some other uh, health conditions can be marked as non diabetic so while training this model we will be providing not only the features but also the labels and this uh, machine learning is going to uh, what to say use some algorithms for finding the relationship between this features and the labels so it will identify the pattern from the given data okay so if so and so features comes then this is the category or so and so features comes then this is the value so that means from the given data it will identify the patterns for every x value what can be the y value so it uses some mathematical calculations or we can say algorithms it will be applying to find the relationship so we train the model with the data and the algorithms and we generate the trained model so this trained model can understand the patterns from those features and predict the y value so that the trained model when we use we can provide only the features and it will be able to predict the label means we will be supplying the feature values because during the training during the training we are providing the features as well as the labels and we tells the model using this algorithm it has to learn or identify the patterns and patterns in this data so once the model is trained it is now capable to predict different uh, uh, features from from the given data it is identifying the features based on that features it will be able to predict the y value which means we need to provide only this x values x values are the features and it is capable to predict this y value right it's something like a like how we are teaching a kid so we will be teaching him 1 plus 1 equal to 2 or 2 plus 2 equal to 3 or 4 plus 4 equal to 8 like this we are teaching okay so once we uh, teach the kid like how to uh, uh, identify the result because we are pro teaching him not only with the data like 1 plus 1 we are also telling him it's 2 or 2 plus 2 equal to 4 or uh, uh, 3 plus 3 equal to uh, 6 like this we are training this kid so during the training we are providing the features which is 1 plus 1 is the feature and the result is 2 which is the label right so once we train the kid like this later once he 
understand how it comes which means if i if i have to take like uh, uh, if if i'm using 1 so 1 plus 1 it will be the double of 1 so 2 plus 2 so it will be the double of 2 so 3 plus 3 it's a double of 3 6 that is 4 plus 4 it's a double of 4 so it is he is understanding the pattern that he has to take the double to get the result so now if i'm saying Okay, go and find out 150 plus 150. So 150 plus 150 is a very large number, but based on the pattern he has learned, okay, what is the double of 150? 150 plus 150 means I have to take the double of that 150. So one, what is 150 is double? That is 300. So he is giving or he is giving the predicted result as 300. Or if I say, okay, 250 plus 250. So based on his understanding, he is understanding when a number plus the same number comes, we have to take the double of that number. So that is a pattern he understood from the training. So if I'm giving 250, then he is understanding, okay, 250 plus 250 means I have to use the double of that number. So 250 double is 500. So he is giving the result as 500. So this is a simple uh, understanding or a simple example to understand what is the what is meant by the feature and what is a label so if you see type of machine learnings type of machine learnings if you consider there can be supervised machine learnings or unsupervised machine learning Supervised machine learning means the training data includes known labels, which means as I have given the example, whenever we teach the kid or whenever we train the kid, we are telling 1 plus 1 equal to 2. So 2 is there as a label or 2 plus 2 equal to 4. 4 is there as a label. So 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. So 6 is there as a Result. So we are providing the label, not only the features, but also the labels, means the results also. And based on that only, he is understanding, okay, if a number plus the same number, I have to use the double of that, right? So that means we are using uh, some features along with the labels to train that model. So such kind of learnings we called as supervised machine learning. But unsupervised machine learning means whenever we train the model, there is no labels provided. It's just only the features or it's only the data which is there. And he himself understand, okay, we have to categorize this. For example, if I'm giving some objects or maybe some toys, maybe uh, car toys or dolls or maybe some other toys I'm giving. So I have to tell him, okay, identify this toys and categorize it. So we don't need to teach him that dolls will go into one category or dolls uh, will have a, one category or uh, cars will have a different category. So by looking into the pattern, he will understand, okay, if there are 100 toys, from this 100 toys, which of the toys are in the cars pattern? He will put into one box. Which of the toys are in doll format? It will be put into another one. Which of the toys are in a different uh, format, maybe a gun or something like that. So it will be placed into another category. So by looking into the shape, he will be able to determine, okay, this comes in this category. But I'm not going to train him, okay, this is gun or this is car or this is doll. So by looking into the structure or by looking into the shape, he is able to understand, okay, this is a car or this is a doll, or this is a gun. So he, he is able to group them. So all the cars will be put into one box. All the dolls can be put into one box. All the 
uh, guns can be put into another box. So there we are not giving any label. So he himself identified from the shape, color and size. It goes into which category. So that means there is no label used. OK, so that is unsupervised machine learning. In supervised machine learning itself, there can be two types, regressions and classifications. Regression means your label is a numeric value, means your result is always going to be a numeric value. For example, if I'm saying, okay, the weather condition is so and so. So what will be the sales for the ice creams? Suppose if the temperature is above 35 degree, humidity is above maybe 60 percentage okay and uh, uh, the other parameters also we are specifying so there can be a prediction so if the humidity is high and uh, the temperature is also high then the number of ice cream that we can sell for a day is maybe 150 or 200 suppose if the temperature is low and humidity is low then the number of ice creams that we can sell is will be low. So that means what we are going to train the model is if these are the temperature, humidity and other parameters, this can be the approximate number of ice creams that we can sell. OK. So in that case, after we train the model with the uh, data, we can tell the model, OK, I have some data. That means I have some information like the temperature is so and so, the humidity is this and the other values, other parameters are this. So what will be the amount of uh, or what will be the number of ice creams that I need to prepare? So based on the learning, he is able to now predict how many ice creams we have to produce. Right. So this is more used in uh, uh, manufacturing industries because last year's last five years production we saw. OK, if we are producing the umbrella, so if there is heavy rain. And uh, uh, then then the production can be high. If there is low rain, if the rain range is between this, then the sell of or sale of umbrella is low. So based on that data or understanding, so this year, what can be the rain amount and what will be the amount of uh, umbrellas or the number of umbrellas that we have to predict, uh, sorry, what number of umbrellas we have to produce so that we can calculate. So the, here, the label is a numeric value. So what will be the amount or what will be the number that we have to use? But in case of classification, here label is a categorization or a class. OK, which means we have to put this into a certain category. So we are saying, OK, if these, these, these features comes, it goes this category. So their label also we are providing. For example, in case of binary classification, it's a type of classification. So we are providing the label, for example, a person is diabetic or non-diabetic. So there are two categories which I am telling. There are two categories, diabetic and non-diabetic. So based on these parameters, it will either go to uh, one class that is uh, diabetic class or non-diabetic class. So here classification is happening. We are categorizing, but it is providing a label. Right, so label is already provided diabetic or non diabetic. So, based on the health conditions or parameters, we are deciding or we are understanding it goes into which class or which category. That is binary classification, which means we will have a uh, yes or no, or the uh, two labels. Binary means always two, okay, a yes category or no category, okay, diabetic or non diabetic. Okay, that is an example. Multi-class classification means 
label is one of the multiple classes means there can be multiple categories and based on the parameters it goes into a particular category so as you can see in the picture there are lots of penguins you can see so there is a penguin with a big yellow beak black beak and with a, a size is big or size is small okay so wings in different shapes so it depends on this category there are species uh, there are different uh, genus is there so depends on the color size shape i can say okay this penguin will go to this category or in case of tiger uh, we can say okay this will go into bengal tiger category or white tiger category or some other different tiger category so all are tigers only but they goes into different categories of tigers bengal tiger or uh, the white tiger or this one so it, we are deciding it based on the color shape and other parameters so there are multiple such classes not only two yes or no category is not there instead of that we have a different other categories like a tiger a category tiger b category tiger c category tiger 4 category so depends on the parameters we have to identify it goes into which tiger category because there are multiple classes available it's called a multiple classification multi-class classification in case of unsupervised machine learning we have clustering so clustering as i have mentioned it's a unsupervised machine learning which means no label is provided like a, a kid from a set of toys he is grouping all the cars separately all the dolls separately all the guns separately similarly we need to identify the, the features of uh, the, the input and from that input we need to identify that it goes or it belongs to which category so similar items are grouped together that means objects which have same features will be grouped together that is called a clustering so these are some of the machine learning types like a supervised and machine and supervised and there are semi supervised also but yes these are the major categories and we have regression classification and clustering comes under this model training and evaluation so we were discussing about the machine learning like uh, how the model is identifying the labels or predicting the labels based on the given data. As I have mentioned, we have to train the model first with the labels to so that the model is capable to identify okay, the or it, it, the model will be capable to understand from the patterns uh, that what can be the result but when we train the model it is very important how much data we have to use to train the model suppose if you are teaching a kid a mathematical simple mathematical calculation like uh, 1 plus 1 equal to 2 2 plus 2 equal to 4 3 plus 3 equal to 6 so if i am teaching only the first four numbers or three numbers and then i am asking him to predict an, an, another number he may not be able to do correctly because he is he is not able to learn properly from the given numbers but if i teach him 10 numbers like a, from 1 to 10 if i am teaching him and then i am asking him the next number or next uh, question by giving a number he is able to accurately answer because when we use more training data the accuracy will increase right because when we learn more things we will learn from it and it is 
improving the accuracy. So that's why in job roles also you can see we, uh, people are asking or organizations are asking for experienced people. So why they are asking for experienced people? Because they know how to do it. They are already aware how to do that. So a people, a person who is having less experience will have a less number of ideas, right? But when a person who is having more experience will have more ideas, right? So that's the same reason here. When the accuracy, if you are considering the accuracy, when the training data increases or the amount of data we use for training increases, its uh, accuracy will increase. But one thing, we cannot use all the available data for training because once you train the model, then how you test or validate whether it is producing the result. Suppose if I have total 100 records in my hand, if I am using all the 100 data for training purpose, then for validating, for verifying whether it is producing correctly or not, which data I will use. So we cannot use 100% of data for training purposes. So what we do is we divide our available data into two parts training data and the validation data. The training data contains the features and the labels which can be used to train the model. Means the algorithm is using this data to identify the patterns and make predictions. So it will learn uh, from this given patterns. And for verifying, the model or to verifying the accuracy of the model, we can use the validation data, which means we are we are providing some features and check whether it is providing the correct data as prediction. So we will have a label data with us, but we will not provide that. So we will keep it with us and then compare the result which is provided by the model with the label which we have. And if they are equal, we can say it is a trained, a successfully trained model. If it is predicting wrongly, then we have to retrain the data with a more number of data. So typically, the all the available data we divide into two parts, training data and the validation data. So, what is the ratio of divide, dividing the data into training and validation? It's your choice. So sometimes some people will use 80% of the data we use for uh, training and 20% is used for validation. Or some people will use 75% data they use for training and remaining 25% of data they use for validation. Or sometimes it is 90 and 10, means 90% of the data used for training and only 10% of the data is used for validating this. Okay, it depends. There is no fixed ratio that you have to use 60% or 70% only for training purpose. So when we identify the model is uh, producing some wrong results, we have to retrain the model with some more data or with the same data. So we have to retrain the model when it is when we find that the model is not predicting accurately. But if the model is producing results as expected, then we can publish the model for consumption. So what is deep learning? So machine learning we have discussed. So we are providing some label the data or the data. The algorithm is going to understand the patterns from that given data and it is capable to make a prediction. But what is deep learning? So our 
humans neural network is capable to uh, think complex uh, processes right so that means if we have to identify by looking into an object we can identify a lot of things about that object right so that means inside our brain there are neurons that neurons will fire in response to electrochemical stimuli when fired the signal is passed to connected neurons so when our organs whether it is eye or nose or our uh, skin identify some uh, signals it is go it goes into the brain and it uh, stimulates the neurons neurons and it is taking decisions or uh, what to say uh, understanding about that particular object similar way we can build the artificial neural network where each neuron is a function that operates on a input value that is x and a weight the function is wrapped in an activation function that determines whether to pass the data uh, pass the output on so that means there uh, there are some uh, functions like we call it as activation functions that receives an input and that has a weight and then based on the activation functions result it uh, identifies whether to activate the next uh, neuron or not so it uh, fire the uh, next function or next layer uh, in the in the neural network based on the result produced by this function so the function that is the activation function determines whether to activate the next neuron like our brain cells are doing so when the signal comes from our uh, eyes or nose or ears it is processed so that is the input signal so see, like this here also we have input data and based on that input data it a process and take a decision whether to activate the next neuron or not as you can see here here is a deep learning neural network example which is a multi class classification example so multi class classification we, we have discussed it's a supervised uh, machine learning category okay supervised machine learning category is comes so means we have multiple classes there so based on the input data we have to identify that 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 it goes into which uh, category so here you can see there are different uh, parameters like x1 x2 x3 and x4 so we pass this input values to the activation functions and it will process and it is uh, finding the result and then it is connected with the other parameters so if for example if the color if the color is black and the uh, size is this then it will be finding one result but if the color is black but the size is small then it's a different uh, uh combination so it is identifying the combinations of different uh, parameters and then finding out the final result as you can see this layers are connected each other you can see the function output this goes into different uh, other layers or other functions because suppose if the function x1 okay x1 is the parameter which is passed to the first first function which is maybe you're talking about the size of a penguin so when it uh, uh, identifies that okay the size is big but size big and the color is black that goes into one category but size big and color is white is a different category size big with the beak uh, size is different so that it goes into a different category so that means the output of this 
is passed to multiple other functions and it based on this it will calculate and produce the next result so it will go through each and every permutation and combination and comes to a conclusion so what will be the value of y suppose if the value of y it means it is going to a particular category right because if the uh, color is black but the uh, height and weight is uh, big and the big color is yellow it goes into one category size is big but the color is uh, black and the big color is uh, black it goes into another category so that different combinations it will consider and based on the given inputs it will go through all the permutations and combinations and find out what is the actual category it comes so for this it is using the activation functions that identifies the uh, uh, next uh, whether the next neuron to be activated or next function to be activated or not so what is azure machine learning so we have just discussed about machine learning and uh, deep learning so but what is azure machine learning so azure machine learning is a cloud based platform for machine learning so if you want to implement machine learning means you have to train the model with a large set of data and you have to validate these models once the training is completed how you will do that do you have the sufficient infrastructure for doing that if no then no worries you can use the azure machine learning service the azure machine learning service is a platform or is a service that helps you to train the model with a large set of data validate the model once the training is completed and if the model is ready to consume then you can publish the model as a service so all you can do from the machine learning service a machine learning studio is a user interface for accessing azure machine learning capabilities as i have mentioned if you want to train the model with a large set of data you need a storage place for storing all your data secondly you need a high compute service for training the model because you need a high compute a cpu and ram is required to uh, train the model because training means it's a mathematical calculations a lot of computation power is required for that so it will require high configuration compute so that compute is required storage is required and once you validate the trained model you need to publish it as a service so you need a deployment service also to publish the trained model so all you can get from the machine learning studio machine learning models trained with machine learn um, trained with azure machine learning can be published as services as i have mentioned once you uh, train the models using azure machine learning studio you can publish those models as a service from the azure machine learning studio because machine learning studio is providing the capabilities for training the model and also publishing the model here we will see how automated machine learning can be used with the machine learning studio because automated machine learning means there are lots of things which can be automated because if you are coming from a non technical background it will be difficult for you to identify okay where to store what to store which algorithm to use how this uh, processing comes how to divide your data into 
uh, training data and validation data. So you may not be aware about all these things. So most of these things can be done by automated machine learning, which means it will be doing most of the things for you. And your, your responsibility is just to create and configure the auto ML. So uh, if you are an expert, then you can directly go and manually create a machine learning and a machine learning service or machine learning project, uh, import the data, divide your data into training set and validation set, and then create the uh, flow by using different uh, uh, data sets as well as uh, algorithms. Okay, So it's your wish if you one, you can manually go and create each and everything. But AutoML helps people to do things very easily uh, without doing everything manually. It means you just need to configure few things. So we have a demo on this AutoML. I can show you that. So this is the lab for, it's not lab, you can say it's a demo for this uh, AI 900 session. So here our, I'm sharing this link in the chat. You can try those things later. Okay, here I can see a couple of questions. How would the anomalies in algorithms are detected? It's just a small example in case of non geometric person. Okay, so here is a question that how would anomalies in algorithms are detected? Just a small example in case of non diabetic person after eating food, the sugar level increase. See, uh, when you have the training data, this is also going to be a parameter, whether this is uh, fasting uh, diabetic uh, data or after having the food. That means whenever you uh, provide the uh, training data, one of the parameter can be this also, like whether it is before food or after food. So after food, it goes, these are the parameters. Before food, this is the parameter. So while considering all these parameters only, it will decide whether he is diabetic or non-diabetic. Because we know doctors will suggest, okay, before food, the, uh, what to say, number, the sugar level should be in this range. Or after food, the sugar level can be in this range. So considering the uh, that that information also, only it is, taking a decision. It's not just a health conditions and taking the decision. So it is evaluating whether the numbers comes before food or after food also. So that kind of uh, informations will be considered uh, uh, in during the training. Are there any standard practices when to use which ML type? Follow-up can data trained in on subtype can perform better with other type. Yes, uh, if you see um, in machine learning, we are using a large set of data along with an algorithm. So there are different types of algorithms we have. That is in the auto ML. You can see uh, later in the demo. I will show you there are different uh, types of algorithms we use. Uh, there are a lot of algorithms with the different names available. I, I, names I don't remember, light BGM and the other thing, k-means clustering algorithm. There are different algorithms there. So which one is better? That we have to know uh, the, the features of each and every algorithm. If you are an expert, you can do that. But it, since we are not aware about that, we can use AutoML which in which we can select or which we can say okay from this list of algorithms apply each algorithm and find the best one so we are 
giving the uh, right or giving the permission to the machine learning studio, you decide the be better algorithm. So I'm saying, okay, this is the data I have and this is the set of algorithms I have. Now from these algorithms, you choose the better one because we are not aware about the machine learning. But if you are an expert in machine learning, you should know with what are the different algorithms available and which algorithm can be used because different algorithms process the data in different ways. Okay, so if you are not an expert, then you don't need to worry about that. You can just say that, okay, AutoML has to decide which is the better one and use that. If you want some inclusion exclusion that you can say, for example, I can say out of uh, 10 algorithms available, uh, don't use uh, maybe the two or three algorithms. Remaining everything can be tried and identify which is the better one. Okay, so there is no practicals included in this uh, session. I'll be showing the demos and you just need to do the hands-on after the session whenever you get the time. So the lab links are available in the GitHub. So you can try the labs anytime later. Suppose uh, later you can create your Azure subscription and start doing it if you don't have now. Anyway, we are not, means you don't need to do any kind of labs or coding at this time. See, this is the first demo, which is automated machine learning in Azure machine learning. Okay. So in this first, we have to log in to the Azure portal. So here I'm just logging into my Azure account. And the first step, we have to create an Azure machine learning resource. So I'm just going here and search for Azure machine learning. And I can see this is the Azure machine learning. Let's create a machine learning service. So we have to specify some parameters. I'll let me create a resource group. I'm just giving AI 900 group and I can give a name. So are they suggesting any name to use? No, you can provide a unique name. So I'm just giving Synergetics ML Studio. Okay. A region, I can say. Central India. There is a storage account required because any data that you are going to use for training will be stored inside this. I can say then ML storage. And there is there are some key vault and application insights required. Container registry I'm not using. So you can see. There are some services required for ML to work. That is storage account, key vault, and application insights, container registry. So I'm leaving this all with the default values. And I'm saying that public internet access is required so that I can connect from my machine. Encryption, customer managed key, identity is default, review and create. All default values. I'm not going to configure anything explicitly. So it may take a minute to create the resource. can see it's now creating the resources.
OK, so. It's now created. Now I can click on this launch studio to. Go to the machine learning studio. OK. Now we are going to use automated machine learning to train a model. So now we can go into the auto ML section. So let's go here. Under this authoring, we can go to the auto ML. Now here, create a new ML job with the following step. And here we can specify the job name. We can say MS Learn Bike Auto ML. Let me give this as the job name and then new experiment name is this one bike rental this is the experiment name then description if you want you can put this there is no tags required click on next and you can specify the task type and the data we have to choose a regression so why we are selecting regression because we have to get the number of bikes to be rendered okay so we need the number of bikes to be rendered for a particular season or for a particular day like if based on the weather conditions we need to identify how many bikes can be rendered on that particular day so i need to get the number as the result that's why the regression is used okay select a data set create a new data set with the following settings we can say data type is bike rentals we can Here description. This is the historic bike rental data. So because for training purpose, we use some historic data. And here we have to use the tabular type of data. So from here, the type we will select tabular. Next. And here. Data source we can select from web files. OK, so here we select this from web files next and here we have to put the url so we can get this url and i can put it here so this is the uh, csv file that contains the historic bike rental data and uh, click on next in the settings file format is delimited delimiter is comma and encoding is utf8 file format delimited delimiter is comma and encoding is utf8 and uh, common column headers only first file has headers so here column headers only first file has headers we have to select skip rows none that is selected by default. Data set contains multi line data that we don't need to select. Okay, so here now it is showing the preview of the data. Say if the day, month, year, season, holiday, weekday, whether it is uh, what is a weekday, uh, this is working day or not, then uh, weather, set, temperature, all these in parameters are there. So if all these parameters, you can see the last number or last column is showing the rentals. So considering these day, month, year, temperature and other parameters, this can be the rental amount or rental value, right? So 331 bikes. 
131 and uh, 120, 108 or 82. So it depends on the uh, parameters. These can be the rental numbers. So schema, we have to say include all columns other than path. Okay, so except this path, rest all columns we can select. Right. And review the automatically detected types and we have to click on create. All these things. Yes, it is done. We select this one, go so next, and in the task settings, what are the things we have to configure? Task type is regression, data type is bike rentals. That is data set is bike rentals, target column. So which column we have to predict? The rentals column we have to predict. So we are just telling which column to predict. That is rentals column we have to predict. Additional configuration settings. So here in the additional configuration settings, here we need to specify primary metrics, normalize the root mean squared error normalized root mean squared error so that is by default selected and now explain best model unselected so we can say unselected and uh, use all supported models unselected so use all supported models we are unselecting because I, instead of using all we can select two uh, things in allowed models, select only random forest and the light GBM. So allowed models, I'll select uh, light GBM and the, what is the random forest, this one. So allowed models, I'm selecting only these two. And we'll click on save. And in this limit section, we are expanding. And here we can specify maximum trials three, max concurrent trials three. Three times trial, concurrent trials three, and uh, maximum nodes three. Means how many nodes to be used. And uh, metric score threshold 0 0.085. That is so that if a model achieves a normalized root mean squared error metric score of 0 0.085 or less, the job ends. That means whenever the metric score uh, root mean squared error metric score of 0 0.085 or less, then the job will be marked as completed. We can here. Timeout is 15 minutes. That is maximum 15 minutes timeout. Iteration timeout is 15 minutes. Enable early termination. We can select. Yes. Means if it is finishing early, we can finish that. Validation and test. Validation type. Train validation split. That is we have to. Divide the data into validation and training data. Percentage of the validation data. So the, I have mentioned some people will use 80 and 20 or some people say 90 and 10. Some people, people will use 75, 25. So what will be the percentage of validation data? 
So we can specify 10 percentage. So 10 percentage of the data will be used for validation. Test data we don't have, but because we are dividing the given data into two pieces, means 90 percentage of the data used for training and the 10 percentage is for validation. Next. In the compute, we will say serverless means we have to go with the serverless because we are not creating any uh, compute nodes. OK, so virtual machine type is CPU. And virtual. Machine tier is dedicated. And uh, virtual machine size standard DS3 V2 or. Some others well, value. DS3 V2 that this we can use that is 4 core 14 GB RAM. And the number of instances one means it uses one instance of the VM to do the training. So now we can submit. This review and submit training job. So you can see we have not configured anything explicitly explicitly in the sense we have not divided the data. We are just saying OK, we 10 10 percent of the data to be used for validation. Some allowed models are light GBM and the random forest and some parameters we have configured. So. Even if you are not an expert, what are the configurations? How to uh, create this model? We are just uh, taking a base model that is uh, light GBM or uh, random forest and applying this and it will give you a result. We need to wait for some time to. Complete this. Okay, because it may take us 10 minutes or 15 minutes. So what we can do, we'll go for a break now. So once the break is over, you will understand or you will come to know that whether this training process completed or not, because now the. Training is going on. It may take a 15 minutes max to complete this. So in that 15 minutes, we can take a small break and we'll back uh, from the break and we'll continue checking this model. OK, so let's take a 15 minutes break. Now it's 1145 and we'll uh, take a break for 15 minutes and then we'll continue after that. Uh, hello guys, I shared you learning achievement batch. So guys, uh, go and redeem your batch.
Like we already mentioned the step on chat box. You just have to follow the step and you will get the activated badge. After redeem your badge, please put done on chat box so I can see who are done with the badge. Guys, if anyone facing problem while redeeming your badge, please so let me know on chat box. We will dare to help you out. Guys, in this batch, you will get all the study material and overview of the module, whatever sir is teaching today. So guys, go and redeem your batch. This is very benefit for you.
Guys, if anyone facing problem, let me know on chat box. We will dare to help you out. And those who are complete with the batch, please put done on chat box so I can see who are done with the batch.
Hello, everyone. I hope all are back. So let's continue our session. So before the break, we were uh, we have just started the model training, so it's not yet completed. As uh, let me refresh and see. Okay, still it is training only, as you can see. It is not yet completed. Once the training completes, you will see the training uh, trained model informations in the screen. OK, so we cannot. Wait for a long time. OK, so what we do. We'll go to the next module and I will. Come back and check in between whether this model training is completed or not, so we'll continue with this lab later once this uh, training is completed as you can see this model training is still going on so it may take some time anyway let's go to our next uh, topic The fundamentals of Azure AI services. So far, we have discussed the generic AI concepts like uh, what is ML, what is deep learning, what is model, or what is AI, all these things. Now we are trying to understand if you are a Microsoft Azure user, how we can use the Azure cloud for building cloud based AI applications. So Microsoft Azure Cloud Platform provides scalable and reliable storage solutions, compute solutions, and uh, other services. Since for storage purpose, we have storage account databases and many other storage related services. Compute services like uh, for deployment of applications, we have VMs, uh, app services, container services, Kubernetes clusters, and many other compute solutions available and the other services if you consider we have machine learning service then ai services then uh, uh, database solutions okay so we have uh, integration solutions identity solutions so there are many other services as well in the azure cloud so what are the different ai services on the azure cloud the first one is Azure Machine Learning. So Azure Machine Learning is the one which we have seen just now. It's a platform for training, deploying, ma and managing the machine learning models. Means if you are an ML engineer, you can go and create an ML model by training the model with the data. Once the training is completed, you can validate and then deploy that model as a service so that you can do with the help of azure machine learning then azure ai services it's a suite of a, a services covering vision speech language decision and generative ai so there are lots of ai services that comes under the azure ai services category if you go into the AI services category, you will see there are services related to vision, like a computer vision, custom vision, speech services, like a text to speech, speech to text, language services, like a QA maker or a language, natural language understanding kind of services, 
decision making services like anomaly detection and a generative ai which is the azure open ai service all this comes under the azure ai services and we have also an azure ai search or also called azure cognitive search which is used for data mining purposes like a data extraction enrichment and indexing of the data and you can use this ai search to search on the uh, data using the o data queries so you will be able to query the data using the ai search and ai search has now uh, very very importance because uh, the uh, generative ai solutions you can create custom or you can configure the custom data uh, with generative ai models with the azure ai services so now uh, ai services can be used to extract information from the vector databases uh, to uh, sorry uh, sorry the ai services can be used to extract informations from the databases like uh, cosmos db or uh, the other data solutions like uh, files or storage account so you can extract those data informations when configuring the custom data with the generative ai models the azure ai services the azure ai services is an umbrella service or umbrella term that you can use to refer a group of AI services like a cognitive services uh, that comes under vision, language, decision, and so on. So these services can be provisioned uh, individually, or you can create a multi service model account. So single service model account means suppose if I want to create a computer vision service, you can directly create a computer vision service which will provide a key and endpoint. To using that key and endpoint, you can use the computer vision service. But it is not possible to use a speech service using the same key and endpoint because you have created a computer vision service and the key and endpoint which is provided is only for computer vision service access and you cannot use it for speech service but there is a multi service model which means you just need to create an ai service type resource in which you will get a key and endpoint which you can use for any cognitive service for vision for speech for decision for any service you can use the same key and endpoint and this key is used for authentication purpose and endpoint is the restful service or restful uh, url for accessing the services let's see the ai services So if you see this is the lab number two okay so if you see if you go to the portal this is primarily talking about the content safety so before going into that let me show you about the ai services so ai services if you search here you can see the azure ai services in this you can see all the ai service types like uh, azure open ai computer vision face api custom vision speech service speech service language service translator document intelligence bot services so like this there are many ai services comes under this azure ai services and it is possible for us to create an instance of computer vision speech service custom vision face api and so on okay and now in the new lab in lab number two 
we are going to see about the content safety studio so the ai service helps users creating ai application with out of box and pre built and customized apis and models that is what we have discussed the built in uh, computer vision or custom vision or face api kind of services available they are pre trained models which we can directly consume so in this we are going to see the content safety studio that enables you to explore how text and image content can be moderated so why moderation is required because when we build applications we have to make sure that the contents which we are using inside this is moderated like if you use some self harm uh, violence or sex or kind of uh, that kind of contents inside the applications it's not uh, against the law and it's not acceptable so we can moderate this uh, contents uh, using this content safety studio so this is the content safety studio so we can open this content safety studio by clicking into this link which will take you to the content safety studio so here you can see uh, the different options like a moderate text content moderate image content moderate multimodal content and so on and you can see from here we can jump into different other studios like a speech studio if you click here you will be going into speech studio where you can try some of the speech service functionalities that we'll discuss later or you can also try the language studio for natural language processing custom translator vision studio content safety which is this portal itself but there is a different portal coming then azure ai studio and the azure machine learning so there this is the link for different other web portals for respective services now on the top right of the screen click on the settings icon so here we can click on this settings icon so here you can see the setting click on this so here we can <clears throat> click on this create a new resource so here there is an option for create a new resource and from here we need to uh, create a new resource let me click on this create new resource okay this is the content safety resource is getting created i am selecting the same resource group location i can select central india is not there okay then east us selecting east us name i can say synergetics contents safety pricing tier yes uh, we can select the free tier next in the networks we select all networks it's available from all the networks then identity we have to just make it own tags i'm not specifying any tags and review and create so we are creating a content safety resource
Okay. So the resource has been created. We can launch or we can go to the content safety studio. And here if you click on this settings, here you can see the resource created. Right. Then on the content safety studio homepage under the run moderation test, navigate to moderate text content. Here, moderate text content we can select. And under the run simple test, click safe content. So what we have to do, click on this. Safe content. We are selecting. And here you can see different configuration filters, whether the uh, content level or content contains these four categories like violence, self-harm, sexual and hate. Right. So there are four categories you can see. So their level is set to medium. So what what are what are the levels it is allowed? So allow low uh, or block medium and high. That means this is allowing the low uh, contents means low moderation contents and blocking the medium and the high. So here if you set it to low violence, if it is uh set it to low then block low medium and high means everything is blocked but if, when i set it to medium then allow low and block medium and high but if i set it to high you can say violence then allow low and medium but block only the high okay. so that we can configure here so now coming into this The text which is given inside this text, chopping tomatoes and cutting them into cubes or wedges are great ways to practice your knife skills. So this is a content, text content. So this is talking about chopping the tomatoes, cutting them into cubes and uh, your knife skills. So that means you are practicing, right? So that we are going to moderate this we can click on run test there is some network error let me what happened to some network errors man? Okay, I'm going to use this resource. Okay, now the content is, the resource has changed. Now let's try. Okay, so here you can see the result. This, the content will be annotated as safe, low, medium, or high. And here you can see the uh, category, severity level, threshold, and the judgment, whether it is allowed or not allowed, right? In the results panel, we can inspect the results. There are four safety, uh, severity levels from safe to uh, high, and four types of harmful content. Does the content safety AI consider this example to be acceptable or not? What's important to notice is that the results are within the confidence level as a, a well-trained model, like a, uh, one of the AI's out-of-the-box models can return results that can a highly probability 
of matching what a human would label the result. Each time you run the test, you can solve the model again. So that means we are. Uh, since we have selected the safe content, it is just uh, putting as text here, which is a safe text and you are running this and you can see it is setting this levels. And since the content, it's not a hate content, it's not a violence, it's not sexual, it's not self harm. So it is saying it's allowed content. But now we can try with a uh, say what is the next uh, thing we can try here. Select a text under violent content with misspelling. And then when we try this, that is this one. Here you can see the dog was given a uh, Uton NASA injection. What is that? I don't know. Due to their served leg bleeding uh, profusely from deep lacerations of the lower extremities, exposing tissue and nerve. So that means this is some content. So you can see there are a lot of uh, spelling mistakes as well as this content uh, is not uh, what what is not safe. It's shows some uh, self harm or hate kind of content. It's not hate, but yes, uh, it's uh, violence because it's showing about the tissue, blood, and other things. So let's see whether this content is safe or not. So we are running this test, and here it is saying there is violence in 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 it, right? Because it's talking about some tissue, blood, bleeding, nerves, and a lot of other things. So when you see out of this four categories, it does not contain hate, sexual, or self-harm. But if you say violence, because it's when you talk about the blood, bleedings, nerves, tissues, and other things, you can see it is little violence, is in, violence there in the content. Check out the keys and endpoint. The capabilities you tested can be programmed into all sorts of applications. So that means we can use this in uh, our applications also. For example, when you create a web application where customers can give the feedback. OK, so if the customer is giving a feedback, you have to make sure that the comments which are appearing or the comments which are added will be uh, uh, what accepted only if it is a moderated content. Means if it is not containing any sexual violence, hate, or uh, self-harm. So that means if it is a safe content, then only we will accept it as a comment or review. Like a fa in Facebook and Instagram, anywhere, you can put any comment, right? But because they are not moderating it. But if you want to moderate and put only relevant comments from the customers. Whenever the customer gives the comment in the application, immediately you can verify it using this API, that is the content safety API. And if the result is coming as safe, then only we can allow those comments to appear there. Otherwise, the comment will be automatically deleted. OK, so when you build applications, you can do that. So for that, you need to use the key and endpoint for accessing this content safety resource. So if you go here, if you go inside this, you will see a content safety resource. This is the content safety resource. Here you can see the key and endpoint. So this key and endpoint you can use to make a call to this content safety service. And if the content safety service returns that the content is safe, then only you allow those comments to appear in the application. Right. So that we can use this content safety service for that 
kind of purposes. So that is the end of one module. And also we have completed the lab number or demo number two. Okay, so here it is still running. I'm not sure why it is taking this much time. <coughs> the first demo is still not completed. I'm not sure why it is taking a lot of time. There could be some problem internally. Okay, let's wait. So by the time we can move to the second module. The second module is all about computer vision. Just a minute. OK, so let's. Continue, <clears throat> so in this module, we will understand the computer vision concepts. In Azure. So. In an image in a. Computer vision service. It is a service used for processing an image. Means whenever you upload an image, it is capable to analyze that image and tell you some informations about that image. For example, what are the different objects we can see in that image? What is the colors? What are the different colors or major colors they used inside the image? Creating a caption about that image. Doing a smart cropping means if there is a main object in the image, we can focus that object and creating a thumbnail or cropping of that image can be done. But whenever we process an image, how it is processing that image because we know that every image is represented as pixels right so rgb colors are used to represent uh, a color a pixel right so every pixel will have a, a number that represents the red green blue values so here an image is an array of pixel values because if you see a uh, picture and you zoom it you will see it will be represented as sim single dots that is a pixel right if you zoom the image you will see it will be represented as simple dots that is called a pixels and every pixel will have a number value so we apply some filters to change this images means like uh, you must have seen we can convert the images from color to black and white or color to grayscale so we apply some kind of calculations on this pixels right so some filters are applied to change the images and this is going to generate some results. That means we use a filter that is another metric. That metric is then used to process the image, means it will go through 
each and every set of pixels in the image and generates a uh, calculated it generates a calculated uh, matrix value so you can see here so we applied a filter on the image pixels and it is generating a result value okay this logic is applied on convolutional neural networks for processing the images in the computer vision so why we have discussed about the filter and applying the filter on the pixels of the image and generating an another processed image because this is the logic used in the cnn that is convolutional neural networks for processing the images and why convolutional neural network is discussed here because the azure computer vision is using the convolutional neural networks to analyze the images and detect uh, features from that image as you can see in con convolutional neural networks labeled images are used to train the model means whenever we provide the images along with the labels like a, for example i can give the image of an orange and says that this is orange or if i'm giving a photo of apple and says this is apple or i'm giving photo of banana and saying that this is banana right so we provide a labeled images means we tells inside the label what is there so that is called the labeled images a filter layers extract feature maps from each image means there is a filter there is a filter matrix that is applied on each image and it is extracting the uh, feature maps means it is identifying some uh, or it is generating a different uh, matrix uh, from that particular image the feature maps are flattened if you see a filter layer which is a matrix that is applied on the pixels of the original image and it is generating a feature map the feature maps are flattened the feature values are fed into fully connected neural networks and then it will be processing each and every pixel in that image each and every pixel in that image and based on the neural networks results it is identifying what uh, or identifying the pattern for each and every object in that image for example what is the pattern of an apple because we have given the labeled data right so it will be processing all the apples images because all the apples images are labeled as apples and it identifies okay this is the pattern of an apple so it may in this color or this color it's a size or shape it looks like this so it will be identifying this pattern and finding out or come to a conclusion that okay an apple looks like this and once it identifies different or once it is uh, uh, identifying the different object types we will be able to uh, test this model by making a call to this service so this computer vision is available as a service so you'll be able to go and access those services so in the con convolutional neural networks there is an image and on which we are applying the filter which creates a feature map and that map is flattened where each pixel is processed uh, in the uh, using the neural networks in the deep learning network or deep learning neural network and it is and it is uh, identifying the objects in that particular image during training the filter kernels start with a random weights and these weights are iteratively adjusted to improve the accuracy of the 
predictions based on the known labels. That means at the time of training, the filter kernels, uh, the filter kernels means here you can see there is uh, one matrix used and the, there is some random weights assigned to this filters. So this is what we say, the uh, filter kernel with a random weights. And these weights are iteratively adjusted to improve the accuracy of the predictions based on the known label. So it will be uh, continuously updating its value to identify uh, the pattern for that particular labeled image. So we, we said it is Apple. So until it find out the correct pattern of the, the Apple, it will continuously update the uh, weights value. The trained model uses learned weight to extract features from new images and predict their classes. That is the trained model use this weight to extract features from the given images, whatever image you have given. And it is predicting what is the object inside that. So based on the uh, uh, image you have given, uh, and the filter matrix that you have or filter kernel that you have used. Filter matrix that it that it has uh, used, it is identifying the uh, pattern of the object in the given image. Multimodal models means there are uh, AI models provided by Azure, which uses multiple types of, uh, or which provides multiple features. It's not only doing a particular task, like only object detection, or only creating the captions, or only classifying the objects. It does multiple jobs. So how it does multiple jobs? Because it uses different foundation models for creating that multi-model. So if you see this picture, Azure computer vision is capable for classifying the object or detecting the objects, create a caption about the object or tagging the objects, okay, tagging the uh, objects in the image. So there are multiple functionalities or multiple uh, features it has like a classification, object detection, captioning, tagging. So all these are some features, not all features, some features of the computer vision service. So how the computer vision is capable to do all these things? Because there are multiple foundation models it uses, like a language encoder and a image encoder. A new approach to modeling involves combining language and vision models to encode image and text data. So to uh, build multi-model models that is capable to work with the images as well as uh, the uh, text. So we can use or we can combine multiple models. The model encapsulates semantic relationship between features extracted from the images and the text extracted from the related caption. So if I say, uh, I'm uploading an image of an apple. Uploading an image of an apple. Using the image model, it identify the pattern of an apple. So it will identify that, okay, this is an apple. This is the pattern of the apple. At the same time, it will be using a text encoder to understand, okay, if this pattern comes, then it is Apple. Suppose if I'm uploading an image, then the image encoder is identifying the pattern of the banana or orange, whatever it is, and it is identifying that the, the structure or identifying the pattern of banana. At the same time, the te uh, uh, text encoder is going to uh, update 
or identifying that okay if this kind of pattern comes it is a banana so later whenever we upload an image of apple using the image encoder it will identify it is uh, app, uh, apple format and using the text encoder it will identify okay this is an apple so it will give a text caption result as apple okay this is an apple or what is a color detected by the image encoder it will say that this is a red apple and says uh, um, that, that the image encoder and the uh, language encoder works together to identify what is that object and uh, give a description about that particular image. A multi-model model can be used as a foundation model for more specialized adaptive models like uh, Azure computer vision. Uh, it uses multiple foundation models so that it is capable to handle the uh, images as well as generate text out of it. Computer vision services in Azure. So there are primarily two services that works with the images. That is vision service. Vision service means it can be a computer vision or custom vision. And the second one is face API. Vision service primarily used for image analysis purpose. That means image tagging, which means whenever you upload an image, it can tell you what are the different uh, objects in that image or what are the different uh, uh, informations it can extract from that image. Second is captions, which means generating the captions. Suppose if I am uploading an image of a, a set of kids playing in the ground, so we can generate a caption using the computer vision, which says it's an image of a group of kids playing in the ground. Okay. So that kind of text captions can be generated using that image. Model customization, because in some use cases we cannot depends on the pre-trained models capabilities sometimes we have to customize the model for uh, building domain specific or industry specific models so such cases we can use the model customization so mostly custom vision service is used for that so custom vision is a type of vision service that is used for customizing and generating the new model. Optical character recognition is another feature offered by the vision services. So OCR, the so OCR is a service that helps you to read the text from the uh, images. It can be a printed text or a handwritten text. Spatial analysis means identifying the uh, areas and their color patterns, the objects in that areas. So that is comes under the spatial analysis. So all these are features of vision service. But in face API, face API is another vision service only or vision category. So that is used for detecting the faces from an image even computer vision is also providing the same feature means if you upload the images of a group of people it is able to detect the faces in that particular position so it will tell you okay i found an image in this position okay that even vision service also can detect the faces but what is the difference between face detection in computer vision and face detection using face API is if it is a pre-trained face image, face API can tell you, okay, this is the image of Mr. X or this is the image of Mrs. Y, right? So that means face API is 
कैपेबल टू टेल यू व्हाट इमेज और विच हुस इमेज और हुस फेस इट इज एंड दिस इज अ बेटर सर्विस और बेटर सॉल्यूशन फॉर मार्किंग द अटेंडेंस in in the organization suppose if whenever you enter into the entrance it will scan your face and using your face it will identify who you are and your attendance it will be automatically marked based on uh the api or the response from the api so face detection and face recognition so detecting the face means it is just a identifying the position of the face but face recognition means identifying not only the position of the face but also the person who is that that you can recognize using face recognition computer vision capabilities in azure if you see the image analysis 4.0 with ai vision service capabilities are first is model customization means you can customize your uh, vision a model or like that is computer vision sorry custom vision which help you to customize the model and create a domain specific or industry specific model i'll tell you an example of that suppose uh, if you are using a computer vision model the problem is it is a pre trained model which is in which all the images are uh, pre trained which is collected from internet and trained the model so yes uh, if you are running a pet store or pet clinic where customers wants to upload their photo uh in the pet store website and ask for consulting consulting that means uh, they want to know which medicine to give this dog or what is the diet plan for this dog okay so those information we have to ask but unfortunately whenever you upload the image of a dog computer vision can easily understand yes it is a dog but which category of dog is it a pomeranian or a dalmatian or it may be a some specialized dog categories so it cannot recognize that clearly maybe the popular dog categories it can detect like a pomeranian or dalmatian or bulldog kind of things it can identify but there are some other dog categories which it cannot identify so computer vision can tell you only okay there is a dog and this is maybe this uh, major categories of dog if it is not able to detect what is a major category of the dog it will simply say there is a dog that's it but if you have to suggest the medicines or diet plans for that particular dog you have to identify what is the breed of that particular dog so what what the app developer can do they can use a customized version of vision service which is trained with the images of those dog breeds suppose in my a pet care or pet clinic i am treating maybe 50 varieties of dogs so all the 50 varieties of dogs images i can train in the dog, uh, model so each category or each breed uh, i can upload 15 to 20 images and i will train the model so once the training is completed my model is ready to detect the uh, detect the dog breeds correctly because i have trained the model to detect the different types of dog breeds so now tomorrow if i upload a image of a dog the the model is capable to tell you okay this is uh, this particular type of dog breed okay. so that way we can customize the vision service that is custom vision read text from images so if there are 
handwritten text or printed text we can read the text from images detect people in the image so if there are people standing or walking or doing some activities it will be able to detect those people from that image generate image captions so from the image it will understand what is there inside the image and it is capable to generate a description or a caption about that image detect objects so it is capable to detect the objects from that image suppose whether it contains a car or a coffee coffee cup or a laptop or a table or chair or whatever it is so you will be able to detect what are the different objects in that image tag visual features so it will be able to generate or create a list of tags uh, about that image maybe about the uh, different features in that particular image suppose if a person is if it is a person's photo with uh, the person was is wearing a glass so glass shirt tee bed or bald or uh, uh, sitting or standing whatever information it is extracting based on that it will be able to generate the tags smart cropping means it is capable to create a thumbnail of the image by focusing on the main object in that particular image detecting faces with face api or face service anyone can use the face service to detect blur exposure glasses head post noise uh, occlusion so if you see uh, whenever we see a face in the image it will be able to detect not only the position of the face but also some other features like a whether it is whether this person is wearing a glass or the person is uh, uh, covering the face with a mask or the person is uh, uh, person's uh, uh, head position okay so noise the, uh, detecting the position of the noise so sorry uh, yeah so all so detecting the position of the nose and the Uh, color patterns used inside the means whether it is a gray uh, skin color or dark sorry uh, light light means uh, yeah light skin color or it's a dark skin color okay whether it is a blur image so all can be identified using this so when how it is detecting the face it is detecting the face of sorry detecting the face by identifying the position of the mouth nose uh, and the eyes so it will be able to connect the dots for this your nose uh, eyes and the mouth so that means it is detecting because it, the model is trained if if there is a, a pattern found like uh, top there will be uh, eyes then nose and then mouth if that pattern is found there is a chance of face so it will be able to go and detect the face in that particular position only managed microsoft customers can access facial recognition capabilities like similarity matching and identity verification so only managed customers uh, managed microsoft customers means uh, now you know uh, the privacy of data is very very important so because of that uh, organizations uh, were using the face api for marking attendance for their employees uh, or some other purposes they were using the face api but the problem was people start using the face api for some other activities also like illegal activities and other thing because 
of because of that what microsoft has done some of the basic features of face api is available to all users like uh, detecting the face or identifying whether the glass is wet or not or uh, uh, mask is there or not so this kind of basic informations we can extract but if you want to do a face recognition like uh, you want to train the model to understand the faces of employees and use that for marking their attendance so that means you have to recognize the person from the face so that feature is not directly available now you have to make a special request to microsoft saying that this is my use case i'm going to use the face recognition feature for this purpose you have to go and make a request to microsoft by submitting a form so there is a application form available online application form available you have to fill up the form and submit for getting access to face verification or face detection not detection face recognition features similarly similarity matching means if you already have a photo and you want to compare with the images in the database in the database in the sense if you have trained the model with the different images and you can do a similarity check with another image so that you can do only with uh, special request so similarity matching and uh, identity verification that is face uh, recognition is only allowed after uh, getting special approval from microsoft so otherwise you will be able to use only the basic features so this is the second uh, second modules uh, first lab so here in this lab we will be talking about the faces in vision studio for doing this lab it's a very simple lab what you have to do you have to go and create an azure ai multi service resource so what is multi service resource you need you just need to create only one service which can be used for multiple uh, ai services like a uh, vision speech uh, language all kind of services can use a common service that is a multi service account so let's go to the azure portal we can search for azure ai services so this is a multi service account here you can see this will give you access to vision language search speech using a single api so it's a single key and endpoint is enough to create all services so we can select a resource group select east us and give a name so i'm selecting this and creating it now we can go to the vision studio and from the vision studio we will be able to access this 
let's see okay you can see this is our multi service account as you can see now from vision studio i can go to that so what do you need to do <coughs> so we can click on view all resources may take some time to appear means if you have created the resources just now it may take some time which account i have logged in okay this is mine See, this is the resource which we have created, and I'm selecting this as the default resource. I'm setting this as the default resource. That means I'm going to use that service. Now, for detecting the faces, what we can do? Inside this Vision Studio, we have an option called the face. Can you see there are different tabs? We can try out the OCR feature. We can try the spatial. We can try the image analysis. We can try the face option. So here under the face, we have detect faces in image and we can try the option. So let's try this. Click on this for acknowledge that this demo will incur charges on this resource. Fine. So if I want, I can upload the image from my laptop, uh, from my machine, or I can choose any of the sample images here. So if I click on this, you can see. Now you can see here it is saying there is a face detector. Can you see? the eyebrows, eyes, nose and mouth positions are detected. And based on that, it identifies there is a, a face detected, right? So and there is no face mask in this one. So it's just a face detection. And if you select this one here also, you can see it is detecting a face here. And this is the JSON information you can see. The face position will be identified. And if you come to this one, you can see there are two faces detected. Right? So simple. And in this case, it is detecting the face and it is saying face mask, yes. And face mask covering nose and mouth, yes. Right? So that means it is possible to detect the faces from the image and checks whether it is possible to identify the uh, identify whether they are wearing a mask or not now let's try with some uh, with some uh, some of our own images so we can go to this url and download this image So we have these images. Locate the store camera one image and we'll try. So here is an option for trying our own images. We can upload. See, it is detecting there is a face. Try with this one. Can you see there are two faces even it is not facing directly to the front still it is able to detect 
can you see since there is an object which is covering the face and it's not visible it's saying no face detected right so that is the face api so the face api is capable to detect the face positions or understanding whether it is wearing a mask or not base uh, using this face api but if you want to try the face recognition and the similarity matching then you have to use or you have to fill up some uh, request form and send it to microsoft for activating these features in your account now coming to uh, coming back to the slide a couple of more slides reading text with the ocr optical character recognition so you can read the text just a minute just a minute hold on
sorry guys i hope you are there so let's quickly finish this uh, section so we were talking about the ocr that is optical character recognition so this is a feature of the vision service that helps you to detect the text from the images it can be a printed or handwritten text so as you see in the picture it's a handwritten text but it is correctly detecting the text and reading that text information okay so let's uh, try an example of this ocr feature if you go to this uh, vision studio so you will any anyway the initial steps are the same so we are not going with that if you go to the vision studio here is an option for optical character recognition so in optical character recognition you can go to this extract text from images so since we already have a resource created for this and we have already set this as the default resource there is nothing to do this is i'm using the same previously created resource only and after that i can go to extract text from images and here i'm i need to select this checkbox to acknowledge that if whenever i use this it will charge on this resource so i am accepting this terms and conditions or i acknowledge uh, that uh, that it will incur incur charges on this resource and whenever you click on any of the available image you can see it is detecting the text as you can see the text position and also it is detecting the text from that image okay so you can even see this is a handwritten text but also if you go to the printed text so life is like riding a bicycle this is a printed text so this printed text is also detected and we can see even it is not in a uh, straight position still it is able to go and recognize the text so you can see this is not a straight image but yes still even it is there uh, even if the image contains blur text contents so it still it is able to recognize that right and you can see the text position is not straight but still it is able to identify the text from that those images so we can try our own images i we can download some image and can I extract that and we can try some images which are there or which we which we can use from our machine we can upload as you can see this is an advertisement and you can see that the, the, there are texts inside this which we can easily detect or if we want we can also go with this this is a letter Okay, so from this letter, it is able to detect the text. And also, we can also try a note. So this is the one which we saw in the slide, PowerPoint slide. So that means this API is capable to extract text information from the images, whether it is printed or handwritten. And since these are exposed as APIs using the REST APIs. We'll be able to uh, use them inside our application. As you can see, all these features are available as REST APIs or REST endpoints. So you will be able to go and consume these uh, features or use these features inside your uh, applications. And one more lab which is associated with that is image analysis, which is 
again using the Vision Studio, but this time we will be using the image analysis feature of a uh, feature in the Vision Studio. So if I go to the Vision Studio, here you can see the image analysis feature where you can uh, see the different uh, options like uh, add captions to images can you see if i go to add captions to images and you select any one of this image you can see this is the image of a group of cows grazing in the field as you can see this is what the image description or image caption generator or if i click on this you can see a man holding a surfboard on the rock right it's clearly identifying what is there and here a statue of a woman holding a scale on top of the building so as you can see this is what right so that means the image analysis feature of uh, vision api can identify or create captions for the uploaded images. So whenever you use any image, you can even upload your own custom image. It will be able to detect and generate a caption for you. So not only detecting the image and generating the caption, there are many other things you can do, like a detect common objects in the image. You can go here and click on this. As you can see, it is able to detect footwear. So there is a footwear. There is a person, laptop, seating, another person. There is another person, seating, table. So it is able to detect the objects from this image. Right. So you can go through the uh, functionalities in the under the image analysis category. So there are some sample images they are providing. So this is for extracting the common tags. See if you click on this, what are the different tags generated? So this is sport, person, footwear, skating, uh, board sport, skate, skateboarding equipment, and so on. So that's the end of our second module. So in this module we have seen what are the features of vision service and in vision service we have discussed the face api and also the uh, ocr optical character recognition and the image analysis features in vision service so that's the end of our second module now we have to take a break for lunch and we will be uh, continuing this session after an hour so now it is already 125 by 225 we will be continuing the session so all of you can go for the break and we'll continue after the break.